Those that have followed this channel long enough know that my wheelhouse is Vietnam badass vigilante vets. Tends to be the kind of thing that I gravitate to the most when it comes to exploitation, action films, vigilante films. It's just the sort of thing that I'm into. Which is why I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about a movie that was just put out by Fangoria, directed by Joe Bigos, VFW. VFW, what is that? Veterans of foreign wars. Good, soldiers are good at dying. Now, the last time that I was truly, truly excited for a recent film that I had witnessed was back in, I believe it was 2011 with Nicholas Reffin's Drive. I'm still apeshit about that movie. I still think that's one of the best movies to come out in recent time. It hits you with action just when it needs to. It hits you with violence just when it needs to. And it's just packed full of perfect 80s neon mood. And it's the kind of shit that I love. So that's why I love VFW. I've already watched VFW about three times. I, I am in love with this film. I'm in love with its look. I'm in love with the casting decisions made for it. I'm, I'm in love with the acting performances in general, of which are played by fucking powerhouse actors, mainly of the B and Z grade variety, or of very recognizable character actor variety, such as William Sadler is in this one as a vet, and he's fucking fantastic. He's sitting there in the bar with his very crumpled up looking Vietnam jacket, M65 Vietnam field issue uh, coat. That probably all sounded stupid coming out of my half drunk mouth, but he's fantastic. And the man needs no introduction to his laundry list of awesome movies, but I'll name a few. The villain in Die Hard 2. And of course his work in Tales from the Crypt appearing in Demon Knight as one of the main characters. Uh, cameoing in Bordello of Blood. And of course playing the lead in the debut episode of the HBO series for Tales from the Crypt. Uh, Bill and Ted 2 as the Grim Reaper. Just fantastic. <laughs> Holy obvious re-recording Batman. Jeez, Pete, you couldn't uh, at least tried to sound like you did in the original recording of this? No? Oh boy. Fight! And in this, it's no exception. He's awesome as always. William Sadler is fantastic, and I also think this is one of the best movies he's made in a long time, too. Like, one of his... Easily one of his best characters. You, you really gotta watch it to appreciate it. Of course, we've got Fred Williamson in here. Z-grade, monster king of badass machismo greatness. This guy goes all the way back to the likes of Black Caesar, uh, the original Inglorious Bastards made by Enzo G. Castellari, which was later retitled G.I. Bro to try to market it more toward the black exploitation stuff. You know, Warriors of the Wasteland as well, Bronx Warriors. Fred Williamson is the shit. Of course, later on went on to work with uh, Tarantino and Rodriguez from uh, Dust Till Dawn. Just awesome. You got Stephen Lang in here. The best part of Avatar, to me, the only worth watching part of Avatar is Steve Lang and his big fucking knife mech. And of course, recently with Don't Breathe, where again, he plays a veteran, a blind veteran who you're sympathetic towards at first, and then you find out that he's a fucking lunatic. And let's just say, if you haven't seen that movie yet, you're not going to look at a turkey baster the same way again. And last, but certainly not least... Martin fucking Cove. John Kreese himself from Karate Kid, probably most well known for that shit, was also in uh, First Blood Part 2 with Stallone as a total piece of shit. <laughs> the guy has kind of a penchant for playing assholes. He's very good at it, but he's also good at playing very likable characters. He was also in Project Shadow Chaser, among other movies of varying B to Z grade quality. Has recently showed up in The Cobra Kai Show, which is awesome and you need to fucking check it out. And let's do a rundown of the characters. You've got Stephen Lang. His character is tending bar. He opened up the VFW. It's welcome, welcome arms for anybody who's coming back from any war who needs to, you know, level their head after they've been through a horrible war, after they've seen such awful atrocities. So he's there, he's sympathetic to people for those needs. 
And then you got Fred Williamson, who's really just a total Vietnam ass kicker. Like, he just you just get the air that he's a total badass, just takes no shit. And I'd also like to mention that Fred Williamson doesn't seem to fucking age. And William Sadler's Vietnam jacket, M65 coat, sporting character just wants to have a good time. They're going to go celebrate Stephen Lang's birthday. They're getting... They're getting to the VFW to pre-drink a little bit. They're going to go to a strip club later. That's all he cares about. He just wants to see some titties. He's been through some shit. He wants to see some titties. And you know what? That's totally cool. But then we get the conflict of the film. Pretty much directly across the street from the VFW, or at least that's what it seems like in the movie, there's a gang of very 80s-looking punks or splatterpunk-looking motherfuckers from RoboCop 3 uh, that have been dealing this new new synthetic drug. It's it's like a, a brand new crystal meth or something that makes you a fucking total animal. Like it's uh it's been like mutating people and just making them totally wild and totally violent. And some of the drugs end up getting stolen by a girl whose brother was killed by the gang, and she ends up in the VFW. So of course. <laughs> Sister, goddammit, it's her sister that got killed. You know, sister. Like the band that Lawless and Six were in together before they hit it big. I suppose this one's a little more forgivable than the blatant re-recording because, you know, someone's sibling died, and someone's brother does die in the movie too, I guess. But still, Pete, come on. Fight! Of course, the VFW is now targeted by a bunch of hopped-up homicidal junkies. And the wild thing about this movie is, is that it's meant to be an homage to Night of the Living Dead. They're in this situation and they're thrust into it and they got to defend themselves and they got to defend this house from the zombies that are outside. Instead of zombies, we got hopped up, fucking crazy, drugged up, ruthless 80s looking punks, mutated 80s punks, essentially, that are trying to break their way into... A little, a little bar that's run by some veterans that are just trying to have a good time. And they've, they've got the whole 80s Vietnam motherfucking vigilante aesthetic. And I always love that shit. And it's fucking awesome. And they all look cool as shit when they're doing it. Well, Martin Cove's in a suit. And I should probably talk a little bit about that. He came back from the war and integrated into society, I guess, a little bit better than the other guys did because he ended up becoming like a used car salesman, trying to sell cars. He's trying to live the, trying to live the normal life. He's trying to he's trying to put the war behind him. And you know what? Good on him. Good on him for that. He's trying to live his life. Used car salesman. Tries to use that to his advantage by sort of bartering with the gang, if you will, uh, which is a really fun scene. It takes place in front of an old abandoned movie theater that has a bunch of... They, they might be real movie titles, they might be fake movie titles, but it's definitely meant to be like 42nd Street style exploitation titles on the marquee, and I thought that was that was a really great touch. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much about that scene though, but that's something that happens in the movie. And it's a great scene. <laughs> Let's talk about the visual aesthetic. The movie looks fucking great. It's got a lot of blues, a lot of greens, a lot of reds. It looks like a, it's got that perfect dive bar aesthetic. If you've ever been to a dive bar, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the neon beer signs. It's a little bit dimly lit, but yet there's a lot of color. The fucking violence is ruthless. People get fucked to shit in this film. And it's absolutely fantastic. And it's done in a way that feels like it's an 80s movie. It, does, it really feels like this could have come out in the 80s. This feels like it could have been part of the canon catalog or the New World catalog. And it's just awesome. Every actor in the film gives it their fucking all. We get the best of Stephen Lang. We get the best of William Sadler. We get the best of Fred Williamson. We get the best of Martin Cove. And everybody else playing it. Even the 80s punks do a great fucking job. 80s style punks. I don't know if it takes place in the 80s. It might. It might not. Ambiguous Robocop future. The soundtrack is great. It's got like like a synth rock kind of style to it, which really fits this sort of style, which again makes it feel like it could be it could have been part part of the canon catalog or even like the Empire Pictures catalog. And if you go back and look at some of Joe Bigos' 
earlier work. He also made a film called The Mind's Eye, which is brought to my attention by Cecil Trachenberg of Good Bad Flicks, and I thank him so much for that because it's a fucking awesome movie. It's basically a spiritual, true sequel to Scanners. It's like what Scanners 2 should have been like. It's chock full of really great practical gore effects. Like, I fell in love with the movie right away, and when I found out that he was doing VFW, fucking in. If you're not into war, like, badass Vietnam vet, war vet shit, vigilante shit, neon shit, synth wave shit, synth rock shit, you know, Martin Cove being cool, William Sadler being cool, Fred Williamson being a bad motherfucker, Stephen Lang being a bad motherfucker, uh, you're probably not going to be too into this. <laughs> but then again, if you're one of those types of people that wouldn't be too into this sort of thing, you probably wouldn't really be watching my channel, so I shouldn't really be preaching that kind of shit. I feel like... If you're somebody that just stumbled upon this randomly, then if you're into that sort of shit, go forth. You're probably gonna fucking enjoy it. If not, hey man, sorry your taste in shit sucks. <sighs> go watch VFW.